how do I make sure that this is waterproof? 200 meters. I made this uh, prototype uh, quite a few months ago, and at the time, the most important thing was to get this done quickly. So, one thing we, we don't know, well, we're pretty sure, is that this is not waterproof. The final watch needs to have a waterproof rating of 100 meters, which, by the way, doesn't really mean you can dive to 100 meters, it means you can swim. And it's actually not recommended even for diving at, say, 20 feet. Long story. But to get there, I need to use the correct gaskets on the front and the back. And then there's an O-ring that needs to go between the back plate here and the body to provide all the waterproof um, aspects along with the, the stem. There's a, um, an O-ring in the stem as well. Now, rather than trying to do this with a whole bunch of watches, what I've decided to do is I ordered some bar material, stainless steel bar material. And I'm going to make a, a fake back and a fake body that I can use for testing the gaskets as well as the O-ring and then do uh, pressure testing. What I'm going to do this time is figure out how to do the front gasket. And once I learn how to do that, then I'll be able to do the back gasket. And this is where I like to set the rapids to 25% or less when I'm first trying out a new program. This clearly isn't the center where it should have been. After correctly setting the origin, I spot drilled, and then I used a drill to remove uh, some of the material in the center. So when I did the boring operation next to remove a lot of material, it didn't have to cut with zero speed in the center. Here I'm cutting the width to be this, uh, exactly what I need. It's not really important, but it's a nice thing to do. And then the uh, typical adaptive machining, which starts with a, a ramp to get down to the correct depth, and then once it's at the correct depth, and then it starts uh, moving radially to remove material as you see it doing here. And then later on, it's removed more of the material. I'm basically uh, simulating the front of the watch uh, enough so that I can get the crystal in place, and then later on do a pressure test. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect. And then uh, finishing the floor and the wall of the area that is going to constrain the crystal. These do need to be exact. The rest of the uh, part did not need to be exact. I flipped the part over and I'm using the side that was away from the camera, which was the zero point before, on this side, so that I'm referencing the, the same exact corner, both top and bottom, after I flipped it over. I face the back first because I'm going to have a back on this and I need to have a good seal. And then after facing the back, I need to spot drill and then drill the locations where the six screws will be to hold the back on and to squeeze the gasket in place. And then using a 1 32nd inch diameter end mill to cut the slot for the gasket. These hydro gaskets um, only go in one way. There's actually one side that has a little bit of a, uh, a bevel on it. So what I want to do is figure out which side that is. And so I'm using this USB microscope. And let's see if I can focus it better. But uh, this side does not look like it has the bevel. And if I look over here at this side. There you go. You can see there's a bevel line right there. And that tells me that this is the right side up for the gasket. So I'll put it right there and then I'm going to uh, press it into here along with the uh, crystal and see how that works. All right, the first thing is to put the gasket in here. And if I did my calculations correctly, it should just slip in. And what I'm discovering is that um, it doesn't want to go in here. 
So I'm pretty, let me check that I had the right gasket. Okay, it does say 37.5. And I am going to measure this to see what the diameter is and make sure that it's what um, I expected it to be. Okay, I looked at it again and it does seem like it should be correct. So let's see if we can uh, get it in here. And yeah, I just needed to do some fiddling around with it and now it fits perfectly. So I'm going to get on a couple finger cots and uh, then get it ready for the press to see how that works. So I'll grab the uh, piece of crystal or uh, glass, whatever it is, and I'm going to do my best to center this over the opening like so, and then in theory, see I'm using uh, what I, this piece that I turned in a, a previous episode, which uh, fits snugly into the bottom of this. And so now, in theory, I should just be able to push down on this and let's see if that fit in place. Okay, I think I need a, a smaller uh, top piece, so I'm going to change this one out. Okay, so I found uh, one that should be about the right diameter. And so let's give this one a try. Okay, that's on there now. Okay, I pushed pretty hard, but it's uh, not going in even. Let me focus this for you. You can see how uh, one side is a little bit higher than the other side. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit more and see if I can understand what's going on here. So I did something that, well, in hindsight I shouldn't have done, which is I decided to, to use this and uh, push down on one side rather than the whole thing at one time and well it broke. The reason I did that is because this was seated uh, quite well on one side but it was uh, proud on the other side so I thought maybe if I did that I could get it seated correctly but I think maybe it's just the wrong size glass so I'm going to see if I can take this piece of glass out here and put in a slightly smaller crystal and see how that goes. As it turns out, I don't have a smaller piece of glass. I have uh, larger ones, but not smaller ones. So I'm going to after, uh, have to order uh, some more crystals to put in here, which means it'll take a little bit longer before I can do the pressure test. Let me take this out, and then I'm going to use uh, digital calipers, which I know are not the most accurate thing but I don't have anything more accurate to uh, see where we're at. The target is uh, 1.508 inches and this is actually a metric dimension but I think in inches. So what you can see there is that according to this the diameter is off by eight thousandths of an inch so the opening is too small which fits with the crystal not fitting in very well. So a brief sidebar, what I should be using to measure this are either gauge pins, and these would be very large gauge pins, or an inside diameter micrometer. And this is the only one I have, which is 0.2 to 1.2 inches. I have ordered a one to two inch inside diameter micrometer, but until then I had another idea that I can use at least for now. I thought about this for a while and what I realized is that I can make some gauges in different sizes so I can have a more accurate measure. So I've got some of this material. I also have a little bit more than what you see here. And so I'm going to go to the lathe and turn these down to different sizes. I'll have one that's exactly 1.508 and then I'm also going to have a few that are a few thousandths of an inch smaller as well as one a little bit bigger. So I can effectively have a go, no go gauge type of thing, but also I can see how far away I'm at, I am when I'm doing the milling. So I can use cutter compensation to dial it in. This sounds a little bit uh, tricky 
for production work. So what I'm hoping to do is to buy a probe, a Renishaw probe, which should be able to do in-process probing and then adjust things using macros to, to get really accurate results, uh, even as the cutter wears. I was getting stringy chips, so I started pausing, and each time I pause, it breaks the chip. I set the depth to cut, in, in other words, in the Z direction, to 10 millimeters. So each time it does a cut here, you can see it's moving from the right to the left 10 millimeters, and then at the end of the cut, it automatically moves back to the right to the starting position, and then I can just turn the hand wheel to add a little bit more depth, and then take another cut. That's pretty close. And then a light chamfer, a very light chamfer, with a threading tool, and then it's time to part it off. And I have a tool that isn't quite long enough to part the entire thing off, so I got as deep as I could with this parting tool and created some nice chips, as you can see here. And then once I got all the way in that I could get in, then I used a saw to cut it off to the final dimensions. That turned out to be a lot more work than I expected it to be. I mean, each of these took uh, quite a while to make, uh, but at least I have the different sizes. So according to the measurement, this one, 1.501, should be close to fitting in here, uh, but the other ones are gonna be too large. So if I put this in here, it does in fact fit, and there's, there's, there's no wiggle at all. So, this is actually slightly under it, if, um, about a half tenth, I mean half a thousandth of an inch under. But at least this verifies, um, because I can measure the outside, that the digital calipers are actually not that far off. So the next thing I need to do is figure out why this hole is eight thousandths of an inch in diameter, less than it should be. I really don't understand it. I've looked at the CAD again, and it should be fine. So what I'm going to do is put this back in the machine and create a toolpath that should clean it up to the correct diameter using the quarter inch end mill. If that doesn't work, I'm going to switch to a 16th inch diameter end mill where I know the end mill is in good shape and there is no wear on it, at least nowhere clear near that amount of wear, and try that. Uh, I'm also going to turn on uh, cutter compensation and so I'm going to basically put it in the machine and work with it until I get this to be the dimension I want and then I'm going to try the crystals again which have since arrived. Previously I had a contour with uh, multiple roughing and finishing passes so this time I ran a contour with just a single pass and I could tell it was uh, definitely taking a bite. So after finishing this I blew it off with some air which is okay because I'm not blowing chips all over the place and then I can tell it's not quite fitting the 1.504. So I'm still over 4 thousandths too short. Uh, when measuring that, you can see that it's showing about 1.0304. Uh, so I tried another pass, and I could hear it was still cutting. Even though it was still cutting though, it wasn't cutting enough. So I decided to switch to the 1 16th inch tool path, so here it's changing to that, and then do a single pass on that, the full depth of cut, and all the way to the width that I wanted. And then measuring this, you can see that uh, this is much closer, it's coming out to about 1.05 or plus, uh, so that's a lot closer. I decided to do a second pass where I set the wear offset to five ten thousandths of an inch, which should increase the diameter by about one thousandths of an inch. I 
And now the 1.08 puck fits in rather tightly, but it does fit in. For some reason, I'm not sure why, the uh, quarter inch end mill was just not milling this to size. So I switched to the 1 16th inch end mill. And on the first pass, it was not quite there. And this was went in and it was loose now. Uh, this one also went in and was loose. Uh, but this one didn't quite go in. So I gave it a wear of five ten thousandths of an inch, ran it again, and now this is pretty close, but it uh, basically goes in. And then I have to push it out. So it's a, a tight fit. And if I measure it with the calipers, which I, as, as I mentioned again, are not that accurate, I see that it comes out to, let's see, make sure it's zero. Five, uh, 1.506 or seven, 1.506. So this is showing that it did increase in diameter, which I expected. What that means is uh, now I can uh, try the uh, press again and uh, see if it works this time. So first I'll put the, the gasket in here. And the gasket just drops in place now, pretty much. I don't have to deform it. That should have been an indication before that I didn't have the correct diameter. Okay, here's another 37.5 millimeter crystal. So I'll get that centered on there and then put it in here. Get this aligned. Then give it a push and Let me uh, focus that for you. As you can see, it's seated down all the way and it's in there snug. So this is, the next step is to do a pressure test to ensure that uh, this will handle the pressure. Now to do the pressure test, I also need to add the O-ring to the back and I need to make the back and I need to do the seal for the back. So while I'm here, let me just check the O-ring to make sure, make sure that fits. I have these uh, O-rings that are 0.7 millimeters in diameter. That's the cross section. And then this is the inside and outside diameter. And according to my calculations, this should fit. So let me grab one of these. Easier said than done. And it should just go into that groove and then stay there as it does. And I can feel that it's proud. If I uh, put this on here, I can definitely feel that um, it's touching the O-ring. So this is all set. And uh, next thing I need to do is make a back, uh, which I will do next time. So this turned out well, as you can see, it has the, the glass in the front, as well as the O-ring in the back. And what I'm gonna do in the next episode, uh, well, the next episode or the next two episodes is cover two things. First, I'm going to create the back so that I have uh, a way to test the hydro gasket on the back, as well as to test the O-ring. So I need to screw the two pieces together. And then I'm going to do a pressure test to make sure that this is waterproof to 100 meters. The second thing is I want to cover how I did the calculations for the size of the openings versus the crystal versus the high trail gasket versus uh, the size and uh, depth of the slot for the O-ring. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, comment below, and help me grow the channel by subscribing. And if you want to be notified of future episodes as they come out, click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.